after studying a little bit about magnetic field and how that can act uh, in different ways let's just start uh, with the production of magnetic field here we have again a simple current carrying conductor having direction of this current that is upward according to right hand rule direction of magnetic field that will be counterclockwise so we will apply a very well known uh, law that is known as ampere's law and this can be stated as h dot dl the closed integral that is equals to total current that is passing through the conductors so in uh, according to this law we may have more than one conductor for example this was one conductor and uh, the current that is passing through it that is i1 similarly we can have another conductor the direction of current will be let's say downward and uh, similarly we can have a third conductor uh, in this we have the direction of current is downward so uh, let's say this is i2 and this is i3 so overall i net will becomes i1 plus i2 plus i3 the direction of magnetic field will be determined by in which direction the sum of currents is flowing either way if it is upward the direction of current will be counterclockwise and if this becomes downward so the magnetic field will be clockwise in that case so basically let me explain what is this dl if we take small portions very small portion of this path of magnetic field this is small portion and we integrate all these small portions this is dl1 this is dl2 this is dl3 so this will become the whole circumference of this magnetic field so h dot dl uh, i take h out of this integral this will becomes i net and this integral part is basically equals to the circumference of the magnetic path so this will becomes 2 pi r whereas r is the distance between uh, from this conductor to the path of the magnetic field now I can uh, simplify this diagram or uh, this equation so we will be we will have this H magnetic field intensity that will becomes I over 2 pi R this clearly explains that as we move away from uh, our current carrying conductor this magnetic field intensity will drop so if I take another circle like this one so the magnetic field intensity at this point that will be smaller so uh, we will explain this later on how this will affect on our magnetic field density or uh, flux so this is the simplest case now only one thing that should uh, you should keep in your mind that uh, this dl part is basically path of magnetic field now we can apply the same uh, law on our second case here we have more than one number of conductors uh, in this particular diagram I have one two three four and five number of turns uh, in other case if we have n number of conductors so we will present it by and how would we apply ampere circuit circuit law uh, on this case so we have to find out what is the path of the magnetic field so if the current direction uh, as presented by this arrow sign according to right hand rule this is our core so the flux will be generated in this direction and it will complete its path through the core and move back in this direction of course that will pass through the center of the core so this is the path of the magnetic field and this is this path is basically equals to the
length of the length of the curve so if i apply ampere's law so that will be equals to h dot dl this closed integral that is equals to i net now in this particular case i have current that is i passing through it so i net will becomes n number of times into i so h that is a, a constant quantity depending upon what is the magnitude of current if same current is passing through it i uh, h will be constant for that for that case so this dot dl is equals to n i now this can be replaced by the mean length of the core lc this is length of the core because you know that this magnetic field is passing through i i will represent now further with the flux uh, the phi sign this is this will represent it this will represent flux so a dot tl is equals to ni so this equation will become h will be equals to ni over length of the core now this is our very important equation uh, from this equation we will see that as we increase the length of the core this magnetic field intensity will reduce so how can we maintain our intensity either way we have to increase number of turns or we have to increase our current uh, in this particular scenario up till now there is no information which type of material this core is made up of uh, this may be ferrite core this may be silicon steel core so if we want to understand what what is the effect of uh, material of the core we have to introduce a new quantity that is basically magnetic field density and this magnetic field density is basically equals to mu times h h is basically presented in ampere turns per meter whereas b will be b is represented into vapors per meter square or sometimes in tesla now this mu is further can be further split it into two parts and that will be equals to mu naught times this mu r whereas this mu naught is basically equals to a constant value and its value is 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7 henry per meter and this mu r is basically is it's a just a number and it uh, is called permeability of any material uh, i can explain this permeability in this way that how much any material allows magnetic lines of force to pass through it if the mat material is more permeable for example its value starts from uh, 2000 and goes to uh, 32000 it's a rough value I mean, it can be more than even 32000 or less than 2000 uh, we will uh, discuss more about magnetic materials in our preceding lectures but uh, let me explain uh, this thing now i have uh, this uh, 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 henry per meter this is a constant i got a new equation and that is b is equals to mu naught mu r into h in our previous equations we have seen that this h is basically equals to n i divided by length of the core so this will becomes b is equals to mu naught mu r into n i divided by length of the core now as you can see that this surface uh, this uh, core that is shown in this figure this is not a 
single sheet this is basically a cubic type of structure i can make this way so this will be a surface area this will be in the square form this shaded area is basically called area of the core now very important if i increase this area of the core there will be more space for magnetic lines of force or magnetic field that can pass through it so uh, let me accommodate that so if i multiply both sides with the area of core so this will becomes flux now flux is again another quantity that is uh, flux is represented by weber's and that is basically independent uh, of the space for example uh, let me draw this is a current carrying conductor as i have drawn before i am drawing this circle i am drawing this circle and i am drawing a bigger circle so flux at any point that will remain same why because as i moving away as i moving away from this current carrying conductor magnetic lines of force magnetic in intensity is basically reducing but this 2 pi r is increasing so the product of these two that will remain constant and that's product is basically equals to flux so we need a quantity that remains constant so flux is equals to mu naught times mu r n i into area of core divided by length of the core now all matters is now i have to rearrange my this equation so after rearranging i will make groups of some quantities that are important this ni is basically called mmf magnetomotive force basically this is responsible for the generation of magnetic field so re after rearranging this flux that will becomes n i and everything i will take in denominator length of the core divided by mu naught mu r into area of the core so i can represent this whole quantity by the reluctance so basically what can you infer from this whole scenario that we have one to one correspondence between two quantities here we have magnetic quantities i will represent it by simple core and here i am representing it by an electric circuit you are very much familiar with this type of circuits here we have this voltage v this is resistor r and a current is flowing that flowing through it so according to ohm's law v is equals to ir or i is equals to v over r as we as we increase the value of this voltage current will increase or if i reduce the resistance value even then this current will increase similarly i have this core material if i increase number of turns or if i increase the value of the current there will be more flux that will pass through this magnetic core the resistance up, up, resistance uh, up that is appearing in this core is represented by the value that is called as reluctance uh, you can see clearly see from this equation uh, mu naught is constant value mu r is constant for constant material once you have used uh, any type of material this mu r will remain constant so if i increase the area of core reluctance will reduce or if i if decrease the length of the core reluctance will reduce so basically reluctance is the 
is basically opposition to the flow of flux. So we got one to one correspondence between magnetic quantities and electric quantities. This reluctance is basically equivalent to resistance in electric circuit. This flux is basically equivalent to current in electric circuit and this Ni is basically equivalent to voltage in electric circuit. So that's how we will solve any type of magnetic circuits in future. I have a couple of examples for you so we can understand how we will solve these type of equations or these type of numericals in which there will be some core and there we will transform into these type of electric circuits then we will solve that numerical so see you next time one next one thank you very much